There once was a legend, the legend of Elon Musk. People want to be more like you. He's one of our great geniuses and we have to protect our genius. This is Elon Musk. Today the legend is crumbling and Elon Musk has become a villain in many people's eyes. You're a super villain. <laughs> That's what a super villain does. But how did that happen? In this video, we are going to find out how Elon Musk went from hero to villain. For a long time, Musk was an exceptional man. In the already exceptional club of billionaires, he was the number one god with a cult like following. Nobody could resist the hype. What, what, did Musk, Musk, what did he do? He, he invented an electric car. That's impossible. Then he made it work. That's impossible. Elon Musk was the ultimate entrepreneur and businessman. And only partially thanks to softball interviews, he was a staple of every hustler's playlist. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. The staunchest fan saw Elon Musk as the real-life Tony Stark, and with that, we actually agreed. After all, neither of them liked to wear the pants at home. Hapless engineer. He just looks so forlorn. He looks really out of place and sad. We're going out of town. There's no. Immediately and indefinitely. Half jokes aside, Musk was also seen as a good man. Elon wanted to make the world a better place. He was a philanthropist, said, well, Musk himself. SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, Boring Company are philanthropy. And he was a successful philanthropist, one of those rare men to turn dreams into reality. Musk, the visionary philanthropist who turns dreams into reality, wasn't just good for Elon Musk, the man, but it was vital to Elon Musk, the businessman. It's through his own myth that he could attract capital and top talent. The monetization of his image is the reason why some people say it was all pure PR. Call me naive, but I like to think there was more to it, and there was some truth behind it. Overhype aside, Musk is an exceptional man, and I think he truly wanted to make the world a better place. Yes, he has a penchant for what's most dazzling and lucrative, but hey, he still worked to make the world better. And if he made billions along the way, good for him. There were even more reasons to love Mr. Musk. He was a role model leading the way for more philanthropists and givers, like in this interview. Try to be useful. Um, you know, do things that are useful to your fellow human beings, to the world. That's the attitude that made people think, wow, what a great man. Musk of old was also extremely likable. He came across as human, empathetic and honest. See for example how he reacted to criticism from these old pioneering astronauts. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil uh, Armstrong, yeah. Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight and the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. There was the perfect, perfect use of vulnerability. You just could not help but empathize and like the guy. It's no wonder so many people love this man. So Musk is flying. What could ever go wrong? Well, along the way, he became a Twitter power user. Critics say that his true personality is showing, his fans made excuses, and some people say it was stress or ambient side effects. Whatever the reason, it did change, not in a good way, and his reputation suffered. For example, take the market manipulation tweets. The way I see it, this is not about being critics or supporters. It's just that it's really, really difficult to not consider at least the possibility of market manipulation on both Tesla and Dogecoin. Then there was the unfortunate pedo insult. And the insult itself was truly the smallest issue there. It's the full story that made Musk look really bad in my eyes as if he was posturing for limelight while adding no real value and only creating useless noise. 
Considering the many lives were at stake in a world-shocking tragedy, it all looked in really, really poor taste. Musk attacks and ridicule of fellow entrepreneurs also came across as nasty and childish. Attacking Bezos when Bezos is also working on a similar problem does not come across as very philanthropic, does it? Instead, it's a behavior more in line with someone seeking monopoly, personal glory or both. Musk also started stepping into the political fray and it wasn't always level-headed. And then of course there was the 44 billions move. Yes, after an endless back and forth worthy of an 80s telenovela, Musk bought Twitter. Going into it, Musk's reputation was still solid and he was able to frame it as a move for liberty and freedom of speech. His keyword was speech absolutist. And frankly, every time I hear somebody going into a virtuous extreme, I smell well. <laughs> Where's the poop, Robin? More Machiavellian folks may say that Musk was consciously manipulating the masses, but I believe he was instead lying to himself, first and foremost. And he was failing to peek into his own darker side. But here is the thing about failing to recognize your own darker side. It will not disappear just because you don't look at it. As a matter of fact, it may only grow bigger. And soon after Musk took over Twitter, guess what? Free speech wasn't so absolute after all. What is absolute is that Twitter purchase is absolutely bad news for Musk, at least in these early days. Musk's image of the business golden goose is getting shattered and his growingly erratic and divisive approach isn't helping any. A large social media benefits from a more neutral and balanced leadership, but Musk seems unable to provide it. Talking about leadership, even simply at a personal level, I for one found it so annoying that he's put his own tweets on my own homepage. I don't want to see his memes, and most of all, I don't want to see his endless tweets, in my eyes, that's what's ruining his reputation the most. It's his everyday tweets. That guy is always there. How do you even talk about 100 hour work weeks when you are constantly tweeting nonsense? How can you be the world's biggest problem solver when people's last memory of you is an endless stream of memes? Also, I can't tell but think, bro, you got like 10 children. If you're chasing big missions, okay, you may have to sacrifice family. But if you gotta spend all your time on Twitter, how about giving those boys a father? Many of Elon's tweets aren't just stream of consciousness as he calls it, they feel to me like really, really childish. Take his obsession with X69 and 420 for example. X and 420 are especially infantilizing in my book if you consider that Elon Musk doesn't even know how to smoke pot. You know how it feels like? It feels like your teenager friend who always talks about pussies and dick sizes and you think, why the hell can't he talk normal? And then you realize, oh yeah, right, it's because he's a virgin and he tries too hard to hide it. <laughs> uh, could you like describe the porn to us? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I think we're all done here. I'm gonna go ahead and send you boys back to your teachers now. Yeah, Elon Musk sounds like that with his 420s, 69s and penis shaped rockets. Finally, I am sorry to say this, but to me he also comes across as a bit cowardly and weak. And that's because of the contrast between his real life persona and his tweeting one. When he speaks in real life, he is balanced and respectful. I love the Elon Musk. But give him a phone with a Twitter app and behind the screen he suddenly morphs into a different persona, including a nastier and more aggressive persona. Speaking of aggressive, sure, many would love to see him fight Mark Zuckerberg, but is this the best that we can get from the man who should make us an interplanetary species? I am glad Zuckerberg is ignoring that, which, again, makes Musk look rather poor. So you got a tag, big whoop, want to fight about it? Take it all together and Musk's reputation is tanking at many different levels. 
his finances are also tanking and we do not say this happily. This is bad news for all of us. When great men with great potential waste time and money, we all lose. We do need more value-adding men in this world, especially when they are as capable as Elon Musk. And we want Musk to do well. What are the solutions then? Number one, Musk must fix X to shore up his finances or cut his losses. Number two, he must stop tweeting so much. That is an easy fix because Musk does great in interviews. It's mostly on Twitter that he tanks. And three, huge bonus points if he learns basic power dynamics. So he can wear the pants at home, gain more respect from other men and deploy better social strategies to improve his reputation. Luckily, all of that is possible, and we are experts at number three. So if you like to gain more respect and a better reputation, you may be interested in what Power University has to offer. Our alumni survey showed that every single student increased his status, and close to 90% at least doubled their status. And everyone at least doubled their ability to gain respect from others. 75% increased it by at least five times. So in brief, Power University is proven to work and to make people a lot more effective in life. It comes with a 30 days money back guarantee and albeit we are biased, we went through thousands of books and courses at the Power Moves and Power University is truly one of a kind. In any case, like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and you can also check out these other videos we have on Elon Musk, and I'll see you next time. Ciao ciao.